here are 10 ways that you can think about, you can try, that might help you if you are trying to get past the, st the stage of healing where you feel like you're just surviving. If you're trying to get to the stage where you feel like you are thriving in your life. Okay, here we go. So oftentimes people feel really vulnerable, really fearful, really um, have trouble feeling like they can be themselves and still feel safe when they are, or still feel um, like they're not gonna meet another narcissist, right? So they still, they want to feel like they have um, the ability to recognize, the ability to see what's going on, the ability to know that if they meet someone toxic, they will back away and, and, and leave the situation right before they end up with another narcissistic person. And people feel like protecting their vulnerabilities, protecting their um, themselves in a lot of ways. But see, when you keep doing this and you keep living that way, you're staying in survival mode, right? You're staying in this, this feeling of just being, just like, just like hanging on and being afraid of people, being afraid of, you know, getting to know people. So how can we go out there, <laughs> have new relationships, whatever kind they are. I'm not only talking about romantic relationships. People get afraid of meeting friends and things like that too. So how can we do that and still feel safe? So 10 things. Number one, when you're meeting new people, when you're going out in life, when you're, especially if you're dating again, know what it is you want for your life. Create a life that you want while you're by yourself, while you're single, while you have the friends that you have that you do trust, while your life is, you know how it is when we leave a toxic person, our life shrinks a little bit, right? Because we lose the connections, we lose their family, we lose them, we lose the friendships that we had as a group sometimes. Often we lose the friends we have sometimes because we see that they're not necessarily good for us either sometimes, right? So people feel like their lives shrink. So while it's little like that, while you are able to sort of be in a more self-contained, self-focused mode in your life, start creating the life you want. Start putting things into your life that you want. Start um, creating positive growth, creating positive influences around you in your life. And if someone doesn't fit into that ideal, keep them at a distance. Or, or, or ask, or just step away, you know, if they are not fitting into what you want for your life. And that's not to say like, let's be selfish. That's not what I'm talking about. You can if you want. But what I'm saying is, um, find, often we are people who are drawn to people that need help, drawn to people that need fixing, drawn to um, the codependency in us, right? Once the counterpart. So if we're instead creating positivity and, and being around people who are self-reliant and who are also giving and who know how to connect and know how to have, have you know, back and forth conversations, not just one-sided where you're pouring all in one direction, find those kinds of things in your life little by little. And as you start, so what that does is it gives you a direction, okay, that, that suits you or find what suits you. Maybe those things don't suit you, right? Number two. Self-esteem. You got to work on this self-esteem. A narcissist will knock you down in this area. They will make it so that you feel uh, very diminished, like a shell of yourself, like you, you, you take the blame and the guilt and all of that from the relationship and you carry it for a long time often. So figure out where you are needing some work and start working daily. Get busy. Get busy on the self-esteem. This is an area that if you are low self-esteem, you are attractive to a narcissist. They can feel it. They can sense it. They go after it. They will build you up in the areas they know you need it to knock you down. So if you can work on your self-esteem, even if you're not like, whoa, I have great self-esteem now, even if you're more like, well, I still have bad self-esteem or I still have low self-esteem, let's put it that way. Uh, but I know what it is. I know the areas I struggle with. Then when someone's building you up in those areas, like say, for instance, you you feel like um, you take the responsibility of other people's emotions. If someone is dumping their emotions on you and then building you up for being this great, per wonderful person because you do that thing, 
you've just crossed the vulnerability line. And that's when boundaries need to be set. And that's where you can learn to watch relationships, right? Because you know the areas that are very difficult for you to move past. And self-esteem is is a big one for most of us, right? And it's not like you have to have perfect self-esteem in order to have good relationships. No, you just need to, I think, you just need to know where it is you're working, where it is you need to watch on yourself and, and then go from there. Number three, are you love addicted? If you feel like you are love addicted, you might feel things like you need another person to feel loved and fulfilled. You overlook yourself to be with people. You feel like your life is only complete with another half. You feel like you are so into that feeling of new relationship that it it is like if you don't have it right away with someone, then you can't see that there could be a relationship. Does that make sense? You get really, you're really drawn to the attention. And, and you know, we got to be honest with ourselves here. And we, we, it helps to be honest with yourself here. It helps to be um, kind but honest with your feelings here because, of course, everyone wants love. Most people want to be loved. That's kind of human, Right. But what I mean by love addicted is addicted to the feelings you get from another person when they give to you and when they are telling you, when they're love bombing you, do you get a a rush from the love bomb? Okay. And that is a challenging thing to see in oneself sometimes. But if you know that's going on, that doesn't mean you don't get to enjoy it when it happens in in a more healthy way. What it means is that's an area you got to watch. And it's an area to think about and to do some some digging, get some therapy, get some coaching around this love addiction so that you can feel fulfilled without another person and also with another person. Okay, <laughs> Number four, boundaries. Boundaries are, to me, should always be number one, but I put it as number four because I just made a list. Okay, It should be number one because boundaries are the very thing. That when you have to stay, say you're in a low contact relationship with a narcissist and you have to stay that way, it's all you got. It is your tool for maintaining your own safety. So when you look at it that way, if you have boundaries with everyone, then you are maintaining your own safety to some degree. You're maintaining your own your own position in the relationship, whatever it is between you and another person. You, it's, it's the thing that keeps you separate from that other person in a good way. I am me, you are you, we will find a way to work together. And if we don't, and you're pushing my boundaries, that's not going to fly. Right. Okay. So, um, it's not only learning to set them, but to keep them. It's learning that you have a right to your boundaries. You have a right to your life being the way you wish for your life to be. You deserve to be respected. Okay. And we don't learn that if we grow up with narcissism and we don't learn that when we unlearn it, if we had it once, but no longer have it from being with narcissists. So that is the number one thing they cross. It's the biggest reason that they gaslight is to push those boundaries. So they have control. So if you have them, they are your, they're like your foundation. Okay. Um, Let's see, understanding why it is difficult for you personally to maintain boundaries, or if you have poor boundaries, why, without judging yourself. This is an area that is so helpful with coaching. And I keep saying that because this is the stuff we talk about a lot in our group and one-on-one. And um, it's having someone to reflect it back to you that is not judging you that is trying to help you see your strengths boundaries are strong we we can we can create them okay okay number five stop the people pleasing just stop codependency is very difficult i'm not even going to use that word because i'm not diagnosing here people pleasing behaviors in order to get affection to get attention and to keep people in our life are not healthy for us of course we want to help people of course we want to please of course we want to be have harmony and all of that. But if we're doing these things in order to have someone just like us, something is wrong there, right? Not with you, with the situation. So 
People pleasing is a big one. And again, that's a whole nother topic. We will have to talk about how to stop people pleasing. Really, let's say for now, recognize when you're doing it. Recognize when you are doing the people pleasing so that you can work on boundaries, knowing what it is you want for your life, setting your own terms, you know, that kind of thing instead of people pleasing. Number number six, self-trust. How? How do you trust yourself? I mean, most people tell me, well, I can't trust myself. I clearly let myself get into that. Okay, no, you didn't. You were groomed into that. What you know now from everything you've watched here, everything you've watched elsewhere, all the reading you've done, all the research you've done, and if you're new to this, what you will do (laughs) as you're healing from this, right, is helping you learn to trust yourself. It's helping you learn to see the red flags, and it's helping you learn to move beyond um, surviving into thriving, okay? So learn to trust yourself. Find little areas in your life that you do trust. Can you trust yourself to get up in the morning and get yourself to work? Right on. There's a place you trust. You know, and if you can't do that, find another place. Find an area that you're already doing. You're already succeeding so you know what it feels like. And look for that. Again, this is, we are after toxic relationships. We are like on a journey to heal, to work, to grow. So do not judge yourself. Do not get hard on yourself with any of these things are failing and, and flailing and like all over the place in your life. That's normal. All these things, the reason there's 10 or 11, 11 apparently things is because this is normal. There's more than 11, right? So, okay. So learn to trust yourself. What did I say here? I said, this can sometimes mean really paying attention to what's going on in front of you and accepting it. One of the biggest things we've done with narcissists is we've accepted the good without accepting the toxic, thinking that the good is real. We're not seeing both and going, wait a minute, I need to weigh this. Does this person take accountability? If you could only accept that the person doesn't take accountability, you would instantly see you can't trust them because they're not going to take accountability. It's all going to fall onto you. Right. And so but because of the grooming and the love bombing and the un, and the not knowing that happens when you're unclear how to um, spot a narcissistic person or a toxic person of any kind, that's why it happened. It isn't because you're not smart. It isn't because you missed it. Of course, we can miss it. We're not supposed to catch it on the first time and then run. That would be fearful behavior. We're supposed to watch things, watch patterns, watch behaviors. And then be able to step away using all these other things I'm talking about, boundaries and knowing what it is you want. If it doesn't line up, buy, right? Okay, raise your standards for how you will be treated. Raise them. We lower our standards so far when we are dealing with narcissistic people because we have the low self-esteem because or because we're groomed. And and we and we get it, we get knocked off the pedestal they put us on so many times and we start to believe it, right? Um, raise your standards and lower your tolerance for toxic behavior. Learn the red flags, learn what it is in those red flags that hurt you and lower your tolerance for it. Don't accept it. See it for what it is and do not take it as to be something you're doing. And it is something they're doing and it is not okay. All right. Red flags, learn and pay attention. Enough said, learn those red flags. Learn to enjoy your time alone. And I know this is really difficult for people, especially if they are anxious attached type of people, or if they are love addicted, or if they just have their self-esteem is reliant upon other people because they have been groomed that way by toxic parents even. Okay. But learning to enjoy time alone and love your own company and spend time doing the things you love is a big one. You should enjoy yourself solo. It should be okay. It should at the very least be okay. And I don't use the should word very often. It's just that if it's not okay, it it leaves you completely open and completely at the mercy of everyone around you. All right. And how do you do that? You do it enough. So you begin to know and see who you really are. And no one should challenge or devalue that. Okay, if you know who you are, if you do this enough, if you learn to be by yourself, and you don't have to learn to be by yourself for weeks at a time, 
it could be an hour. It could be five minutes. It can be 10 minutes. Start small. If you don't like being alone, start small. Go grab a coffee. This morning I went and sat at a coffee shop. Okay, I wasn't completely alone. I had a pup with me. But um, we sat there and just sat by herself for 15 minutes. And it was nice to kind of recharge and recenter and then get on with my day to be here with you. So, um, and yes, I talked to other people. Yes, there were, you know, it was pretty social there, but it was, but I didn't need anyone. You know what I mean? Like I was fine being by myself. And that is what we're aiming for, even if it's five, 10, 15 minutes at a time. Start with things you already do. Go to the grocery store, go to, Drive your drive to work and just enjoy it. Enjoy your own company. Enjoy the thoughts in your head. Enjoy. And if you can't find ones you do, start making it your priority to learn to like yourself a little bit. Okay. And then maybe a lot. All right. Number nine, trust your intuition, trust your gut. Now, this can be tricky because when we are exposed to toxic people and when we are love bombed and when we are we have all these conflicting feelings or when we meet a nice person and they do something nice for us. Whoa, red flag, love bombing. So if you learn the red flags, but you also learn that that doesn't mean just because something feels like a red flag, it is. What that means is because something feels like a red flag, it might be. And if you see it in patterns, then it probably is. But somebody being nice to you does not mean they're love bombing. I can remember <laughs> I was on uh, talking to one of the, the admin for span, she was always so nice to me. And I remember telling someone, it feels like she's love bombing me. She's just a really nice person. And she is just, she was just appreciative to have me there and like super nice and actually liked me. So there was no love bombing going on. What there was, was appreciation and kindness and friendship and like an outpouring of herself toward me. And it felt really like, whoa, that's a lot. What's she doing? It wasn't love bombing, but it felt like it. Now, had she done that, plus tried to manipulate me or backstab me or do a bunch of other things, then that would have become a red flag. Does it, am I making sense? Sometimes the red flags are one thing with other things combined. Sometimes it's just someone being nice. So we got to learn. We learn discernment. That's what I'm getting at. Learn discernment so that you can trust your intuition. Now, if you're hanging out with someone and you're like, oh, I'm a little uncomfortable, you don't know because you're getting swept into the situation, right? You're getting swept away. You're, you're not sure what you're feeling. You're just getting anxious and you walk away and you feel drained. You feel anxious. You feel like you feel that prickly feeling of like something is off there. Trust that. It's not worth it. It's not, it's usually not worth it. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. You have whatever time you have. Okay. But right now you have right now, take your time. You don't need to rush into friendships, relationships, or anything with anyone. Just slow it down. And when you feel that rush of like connection, you want it so bad, step back a second. Realize you don't know this person if they're brand new and you need to learn to know this person and give them how I look at it is giving them the respect of the opportunity and myself the respect of the opportunity to know one another. Does that make sense? Instead of rushing into believing what I think I believe about them because of how they treat me. So take your time, get to know them as a human being, give that relationship respect. If the other person isn't doing that and you talk about it and they're still not doing it, you know, that's when you start to see things. If you can keep just... I'm not saying stay removed from people and don't connect. What I'm saying is don't think that the connection that you feel means more than it does. It could just be a simply a human, two people, two people hanging out and it works, bam, and you connect. It doesn't have to mean more than that until you really know someone. I am Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. Head on over there if you need any help for anything related to narcissism and how it affects you. If you need information on coaching or group coaching, I mentioned it a lot here today. So check out the main comments of every video. There's all kinds of information on ways to contact me or information about the coaching programs that we offer. So uh, check it out. Um, otherwise, I guess that's it. Hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.